smartest thing on the planet. And we play a practice round, and he shot over 90. He did. <laughs> easy, easy. He, well, you did. I didn't hit it that bad. And, uh, we got okay, in I hit it that bad. We got I hit it better than 90. We <laughs> got in that night, and he goes, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I'm stinking it up. I'm gonna, I'm not even, I don't even have any business being here. I'm playing terrible, and all night long I listen to it. And so I get in, and I'm looking at the scoreboard, and there's a number way up here, which is leading, but I didn't even look at that. Uh, I shot something in the 70s, I don't know what, which that's a, a victory there on that golf course. But I started immediately looking down here at the worst scores on the board because I was worried, worried about Worried about me. I was seriously worried about him. I, I thought the guy is, is about to slit his wrist. So I'm looking over here at the 90s. There were some 90s and some 80s. Working my way up, 82, 81. Here we go into the 70s. I can't find him anywhere. Here we go in around 71. 72 is the lowest score shot, but there's a 68 or over here, a 67. I never look up there. Finally, I, I give up, and I look up, and it says Stan Utley. And, uh, and really, that's what this guy can do. He's a magician. And uh, it blossomed later in your career into uh, uh, a short game uh, career, basically. Everybody here, maybe in golf, we all know the story, but tell everybody here how you came to be uh, a short game coach. I think the, going way back in my career, I realized I like to help people. That's just who I am. So as a player and as all of us, we help our buddies. Uh, I loved hearing, it, it backs me up when I hear Tom Fernese say that he hung out with Seve. Because my story of how I teach sand play is that Tom Fernese taught me and that's what I have to teach you. And the reason I would want to teach you that is because he learned from Seve. Why wouldn't that be what you'd want to learn how to do? So I'm a guy that loves to pass on what I've learned from my teachers and other players. Uh, as my playing career wound down and uh, I seemed to be enjoying helping people more and more, probably the big turning point was I was got in the car one night late I remember I was up in Salt Lake City and my wife and my two kids had been out there in the parking lot I think sometime and uh, that night they had been sitting in the car watching me teach a guy I was trying to beat the next day. And so my wife was really nice about how she put it. She said, look, says, we really, really don't mind waiting on you if you're teaching golf. I mean, if you're, if you're practicing golf, but if we're waiting on you and you're teaching the guys you're playing tomorrow, they have to pay. <laughs> and that really changed my career because the next day, you know, I was more scared of her than I was what I was going to say to the other guys. And I told the guys from then on, I said, you owe me for this lesson. I don't care if you pay me, but you owe me because I figured that was a safe way out of it. And more guys started asking. Uh, the truth is the guy who asked and, and changed my life was Jay Haas. He was... Uh, actually playing in his hometown nationwide event in 2001. And year 2000 was the only time in his whole career until he went full-time champions that he didn't finish in the top 20, 125. So he was kind of at a low point if there was such a thing in a career as good as his. Uh, he asked me about his stroke. We just chatted in the yard in the dark. We didn't have any balls, we didn't have a putter. But what I said that night caused his ball to roll better the next couple days and he rang me up on the phone and we we had a phone conversation for about three months and he started playing better and uh, kind of the rest is history. He went on a couple years later he was on the Ryder Cup team. He played the top 30 in the world about the next three years in a row so that that launched my career and anytime a guy does that the first thing that does is that causes all his friends to want what he has and so when Peter Jacobson called you know, I had time for him. When Craig Stadler called, I had time for him. Both those guys won PGA Tour events at age 50. The year they turned 50, they both won on the Tour and the Champions event. And so that's how my career got launched.